Namaste. In this week, we shall start looking at volume computations. As you would remember, uh, computation of the volume is one of the most essential parts of doing forestry. Because whether we are doing forestry, whether we are managing our forest stands for say timber or for carbon sequestration or for any other means. In most cases, we require how much amount of biomass is there in the forest, how much of it can be harvested, how much of it requires to be left in the forest and so on. So, volume computations are paramount in managing any forest stand. Today, we shall start looking at volume computations through sections. So, these are known as direct calculations. So, we have done one example before. So, let us use this example to see how uh, what we mean by direct computations. So, in this uh, problem that we had done in a previous lecture, a tree has a height of 11 meters, its diameter at different heights is given and we were required to calculate the volume of the tree. Now, this is the standard way in which a tree is cut for measurement purposes and as we had discussed in that lecture, we divide our tree into a number of sections in which the first section is considered to be of a length of twice of breast height. So, that we could use the middle uh, diameter or the diameter at breast height to, to compute its volume. The other sections were taken to be 3 meter sections. So, that not only can we uh, use this tree for the computation of volume, but at the same time it can also be used uh, in a, a profitable manner by selling it. So, 3 meter is a standard section length and the topmost section was considered to be a conical section. So, we computed the volumes of all the sections and then we added up those volumes to get the volume of the tree. We also dealt with the volumes of a number of different shapes. So, now today we will look at an extension of those equations. So, as you would recall the volume of a cylinder is given by S into L. So, we had earlier referred to this volume by this equation. So, in a cylinder both the end sections are circular. it has a length of L. So, it is and it has a radius of R. So, we used to say that volume is equal to pi R square H. Now, in today's uh, lecture we will uh, redefine these terms. So, we consider the area of a cross section to be S and we consider this height as the length of the solid. So, in this case because the section is a circle, so S is equal to pi r square, H is equal to L. So, we can write that pi r square H is equal to S into L. So, that is the volume of a cylinder, it is S into L where S is the uh, cross sectional area of base and L is the height of cylinder or we can call it as the length of the solid. Now, if we take a section of the cylinder, so let us take a section at this point. So, we have removed the top portion and we are now considering this section. So, this part of the cylinder is left. So, if we wanted to uh, calculate the volume of this frustum of a cylinder, then also we could use the same equation because this section and this section both are parallel circles. So, the cross sectional area here S will also be equal to pi r square and now we can compute it for another length, let us call it L bar. So, in this case the volume will be given by S into L bar. So, when we are talking about a cylinder, so coming back to the slides, 
the volume of the full cylinder is of or the volume of the full solid is given by s into l the volume of a frustum of a solid is also given by s into l where l now is the length of the frustum and here s is the sectional area of the base and l is the length of the log or the length of the solid now we also looked at a shape called paraboloid now in the case of a paraboloid the volume of the full solid is given by s into l by 2 so if you remember in the case of a cone the volume was 1 by 3 pi r square h in the case of a paraboloid in the place of 1 by 3 it is 1 1 by 2 so the volume of the full solid is given by s into l by 2 and the volume of the frustum of the solid if we take smolian's formula it is s1 plus s2 uh, by 2 into l so in the case of a uh, paraboloid now if this portion has a cross sectional area of s and this portion has a cross sectional so let us call it s1 and s2 then the volume of the frustum of the solid can be taken as the average of both these areas so that would be the area of the cross section nearly of the middle of the solid so it will be s1 plus s2 upon 2 into l now previously we saw that the volume is given by s by 2 into l so how can we correlate both of these because if we extend this solid such that both these ends meet at a point so at that point your s1 will be equal to 0 so then we will have if we use this equation it will be 0 plus s2 where s2 is the uh, cross sectional area of the base upon 2 into l which will be s2 upon 2 into l which is the same as this equation So now this formula is known as the Smolian's formula. Volume is the average cross sectional area of two ends into length of the solid. So the average cross sectional area is given by S1 plus S2 upon 2 multiplied by the length of the solid so this is the smolian's formula now coming back to the slides so here we have uh, volume is equal to s1 plus s2 upon 2 into l now in the top equation in this equation the s is the sectional area of the base in this case s1 and s2 refer to the sectional areas of the ends when we are taking a frustum and l is the length of the solid so you must not confuse between s s1 and s2 there is also another formula for paraboloid which is known as the huber's formula so this talks about the volume of a frustum of solid and it is given by sm into l where sm is the sectional area of the middle of the solid and l is the length of the log so if we drew our paraboloid if the length is l so this much is l if we take l by 2 so we are dividing it into two parts so this one is l by 2 and this much also is l by 2 so this is the middle point so at the middle point if we take a cross section and we define this cross sectional area as SM. So, SM is the cross sectional area of the middle point of the solid. Then our Huber's formula gives volume is equal to SM into L. So, SM here is the, the sectional area of the middle of the solid and L is the length of the solid. Now, coming back to the slides. So, this is 
the Huber's formula for a paraboloid. Now, let us consider a cone. So, in the case of a cone, we had earlier defined the volume of the full solid as 1 by 3 pi r square h. Now, pi r square is the uh, sectional area of the base of the cone. So, if we drew a cone, so if this is a cone, with a height h and the bottom with a radius of r, then we define volume is equal to 1 by 3 pi r square h. Now, changing the notations, we can call the length of the solid as L and the cross sectional area of base as s. So, now cross sectional area of base is given by pi r square. So, in this formula, we are replacing so, 1 by 3 pi r square can be written as s and h in this case can be written as l. So, now in this case l is not the slant height. So, earlier we had defined the slant height as this height, so this length. So, we had defined l is equal to square root of r square plus h square which is the slant height. Now, remember that when we are defining this equation, this L is not the slant height, but length of solid. So, you must not confuse between this L and the previous L. So, now we can write the, vol the volume as 1 by 3 S into L. Now, what will be the cross section, uh, what will be the volume of a frustum of a cone? So, what is the frustum of a cone? If we drew a cone again and we are taking a section here. So, now this portion, so the top again is a cone, but this portion is the frustum of a cone. So, in this case we are removing the top portion, the top portion incidentally is another cone. So, the frustum of a cone is a, a portion of a cone in which its top has been cut to give it two ends. So, now if we drew the frustum of the cone again, so its top would be circular, the sides will be straight and the bottom edge will also be circular. So, this is a circular end, this again is a circular end. Now, we can write this, uh, now both these ends have their own sectional areas. So, this sectional area is, so this is cross circular end of cross sectional area is equal to S 1 and here it is the circular end of cross sectional area is equal to S 2. Now, if L be the length of the solid, so if this height is equal to L, then the, uh, the volume of the frustum of the cone. So, frustum of cone is given by V is equal to S 1 plus S 2 plus square root of S 1 S 2 whole upon 3 into L. So, we have taken both these cross sectional areas S 1 and S 2, you add them up, then you multiply S 1 and S 2 and then take a square root, then you take all three of these, div, uh, take the average. So, this is the average of S 1, S 2 and square root of S 1 and S 2. 
So, this is the average cross sectional area multiplied by the length. So, for instance, earlier we had defined the volume to be S into L in the case of a cylinder, here it is S bar into L, where S bar is the average of S 1, S 2 and square root of S 1, S 2. Now, incidentally, if we extended this frustum to make a cone again, so in that case your S 2 will be 0. So, what will be the volume now? Volume will be S 1 plus 0 plus a square root of S 1 into 0 which is 0 upon 3 into L which will be S 1 by 3 into L. So, this will be the volume of cone. So, the volume of the cone is 1 by 3 S into L volume of cone is 1 by 3 S into L where S is pi r square. So, by using this equation for the frustum, we can derive the equation, equation for cone as well. So, this is one formula that you need to remember the volume of a frustum of a cone is given by the average of S 1, S 2 and square root of S 1, S 2 multiplied by the length of the solid. Now, coming back to the slides again, when we talk about a niloid, so niloid is also a shape that we uh, encountered before. So, here we define the volume of the full solid as 1 by 4 S into L. So, in the case of cone, it was 1 by 3, in the case of a niloid, it becomes 1 by 4 and the volume of the frustum of the solid is given by Newton's formula by the average of S 1, S 2 and 4 times the uh, middle sectional area divided by 6 into L. So, in the case of a niloid, S 1 is taken to be the cross sectional area of thick end is S 1, cross sectional area of thin end is S 2, then we take a middle point and we take the cross sectional area of middle is S m the length of the solid is L. So, volume is given by S 1 plus S 2 plus 4 times of S m divided by 6 into L and this thing is known as Newton's formula. This is the volume of frustum. Now, if we extended this frustum such that it became a full solid with one end to be circular by the given by the cross sectional area of S and the other being a point with a cross sectional area of 0, then what would be the volume of the niloid complete niloid. So, in this case at around half of it we will have uh, the S m will be roughly equal to half of S and then we will give the volume of the niloid as 1 by 4 S into L. So, this is the volume of the full solid. Now, coming back to the slides. So, this was the Newton's formula. So, the Newton's formula if you generalize it, it says that the volume of the frustum of a solid is given by the two cross sectional areas S 1 plus S 2 plus 4 times the cross sectional area of the middle portion. So, 4 into S m divided by 6 into L. So, if you look at this formula in greater detail, this formula is one of the most accurate formulae which can be which is used to find errors in the other formulae. So, the other formula are Huber's formula and the Smolian's formula. 
So, Newton's formula is considered to be the most generalized and the most accurate of all these three. It can be used for the frustum of a nailoid, cylinder, paraboloid and a cone. So, for all of these cases you can use Newton's formula. However, this formula is more cumbersome than the other two formulae because here you require you are required to take three measurements of cross sections of both the ends and the middle. And in case your logs are stacked, so when we say stacked logs we mean that this is your first log, then you have the second log in continuation, and then you have your third log, then there is a log below this, and then a log below these and so on. So, when you have a, uh, this uh, stacked uh, stack of logs, so in this case taking the diameters of the ends is easy because they are accessible, but taking the diameter of the middle portion of a log is very difficult. So, taking a diameter here or measuring the cross section here becomes difficult because you do not have access to the central portion of the log. So, coming back to the slides, it is difficult to measure the mid diameter in stacked logs, which is why Newton's formula even though it is the most accurate of all the three formulae, it is less used in the fields conditions. Now, let us look at Smolian's formula and try to generalize it. So, it states that the volume of a frustum of a solid is the average of the end cross sectional areas multiplied by the length of the solid. So, here in place of uh, taking three readings you are only required to take two readings of the end cross section. So, it is easy to use in the field conditions. And when you have a stack of logs because you only are required to calculate the end cross sectional area. So, you can just use a scale or a ruler to measure the diameter of the ends and to get these cross sectional areas. Smolian's formula is accurate for cylinder and paraboloid, but it overestimates the volume by a small bit. The other formula that we look at today is the Huber's formula. So, in the case of Huber's formula it is defined as the cross sectional area of the middle of the solid multiplied by the length of the solid. So, in this case you are required to take only one cross sectional area measurement at the middle, but again in the case of stacked logs that becomes difficult because it is difficult to access the central part of a stacked log. It is accurate for cylinder and paraboloid and unlike Smolian's formula that overestimated the volume, Huber's formula underestimates the volume. So, now that we know that the Newton's formula is the most accurate formula, what is the amount of overestimation or underestimation in the other two formulae? So, let us find out the difference between Smolian's and Newton's formulae. So, if you remember the volume in the case of the Smolian's formula, so V s is given by s 1 plus s 2 upon 2 into L. In the case of Newton's formula, the volume is given by s 1 plus s 2 plus 4 times of S m whole divided by 6 into L. So, what is the difference between both of these? So, if we take V s minus V n, we get L by 2 into S 1 plus S 2 minus L by 6 into S 1 plus S 2 plus 4 S m or if you multiply by 3 by uh, by 3 that is multiplying it by unity we get 3 L upon 6 S 1 plus S 2 minus L upon 6 S 1 plus S 2 plus 4 S m or taking L by 6 common. So, we have 3 S 1 plus 3 S 2 minus S 1 minus S 2 minus 4 S m which is equal to L by 6 
टू एस वन प्लस टू एस टू माइनस फोर एस एम विच इज इक्वल टू एल बाई थ्री एस वन प्लस एस टू माइनस ट्वाइस ऑफ एस एम सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द स्मॉल एन एंड द न्यूटन्स फॉर्मूला नाउ इफ यू कैलकुलेटेड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन यूबर्स एंड न्यूटन्स फॉर्म्यूले वॉट वुड दैट बी सो वॉल्यूम बाई द ह्यूबर्स फॉर्मूला इज गिवन बाई एस एम इन टू एल वॉल्यूम बाई द न्यूटन्स फॉर्मूला इज गिवन बाई एस वन प्लस एस टू प्लस फोर टाइम्स ऑफ एस एम बाई सिक्स इन टू एल सो इफ यू कैलकुलेटेड वॉल्यूम बाई ह्यूबर्स माइनस वॉल्यूम बाई न्यूटन्स वॉट डू वी गेट वी गेट एस एम इन टू एल माइनस एल बाई सिक्स एस वन प्लस एस टू प्लस फोर टाइम्स ऑफ एस एम सो मल्टीप्लाइंग एट बाई सिक्स बाई सिक्स एंड टेकिंग एल बाई सिक्स कॉमन वी गेट सिक्स टाइम्स ऑफ एस एम माइनस एस वन माइनस एस टू माइनस फोर टाइम्स ऑफ एस एम विच इज इक्वल टू एल बाई सिक्स सो वी हैव ट्वाइस ऑफ एस एम माइनस एस वन माइनस एस टू और वी कैन राइट इट एज माइनस एल बाई सिक्स एस वन प्लस एस टू माइनस ट्वाइस ऑफ एस एम नाउ इफ यू लुक एट द प्रीवियस पेज हेयर वी हैड कैलकुलेटेड द डिफरेंस एज एल बाई सिक्स एज एल बाई थ्री एस वन प्लस एस टू माइनस ट्वाइस ऑफ एस एम सो लेट एस राइट दिस पोर्शन एज एक्स सो हेयर वी हैव द डिफरेंस वी एस माइनस वी एन इज इक्वल टू एल बाई थ्री इन टू एक्स सो एक्स इज इक्वल टू एस वन प्लस एस टू माइनस ट्वाइस ऑफ एस एम राइट सो एस वन प्लस एस टू माइनस ट्वाइस ऑफ एस एम इज एक्स सो पुटिंग इट हियर वी हैव वी एच माइनस वी एन इज माइनस एल बाई सिक्स इन टू एक्स सो वॉट डू वी गेट हियर वी हैव वी एस माइनस वी एन इज इक्वल टू सो हियर इट वॉज एल बाई थ्री एक्स एल एक्स बाई थ्री एंड वी एच माइनस वी एन इज माइनस एल एक्स बाई सिक्स सो इफ दिस फॉर्मूला इफ द फर्स्ट फॉर्मूला इज ओवर एस्टिमेटिंग द वॉल्यूम एज कंपेयर टू द न्यूटन्स फॉर्मूला एंड रिमेंबर दैट द न्यूटन्स फॉर्मूला is considered to be the most accurate formula so if the first one is overestimating then the second one would be underestimating and if the first one is underestimating then the other one would be overestimating because in the first case it is plus and in this case it is minus so today we had a look at uh, the uh, volume computation by the direct method and we also looked at Huber's formula, Smolian's formula, and Newton's formula for different kinds of solids and frustums of solids, and we saw that if we considered Newton's formula to be the most accurate formula, the Smolian's formula and the Huber's formula would is uh, would bring out different estimations of the volume, which would be one if one is overestimation, then the other one would be an underestimation. so we can use these formulae to calculate the volumes of different sections of logs or of complete logs by themselves so thank you for your attention jai hind